Friday, June 26, is the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. Here in Ghana, there's been a lot of concern about the movement and consumption of banned drugs. So recently, officials of the Narcotics Control Commission and the Ghana Revenue Authority retrieved assorted drugs, including cocaine, at the Aplau border. But there, there's even a, a, bigger, a bigger worry. Here we're in Ghana, we're told that there are, there are links to uh, politics, there are links uh, between drugs and politics, because a recent report by the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime said, and I quote, widespread collusion among, po among politicians is said to have facilitated the illicit drug trade in Ghana with profits from drug trafficking reportedly infiltrating the financing of the country's political system. This is specifically about us. One of the main reasons for the collusion, the report says, is to be the, is the high cost of running election campaigns within democratic systems of gov governance, unquote. Today, this will be one of the highlights of a discussion that we have with the Narcotics Control Commission. And I'm joined via Zoom by Sylvester Nana Kumsin. Sylvester is head of the Education and Prevention Unit of NACOP. Uh, but first of all, watch the story about the abuse of drugs in some Ghanaian communities. We'll bring the story. Let me engage in Mr. Kumsin, who is joining me on Zoom. Hello, Mr. Kumsin. Mr. Kumsin, if you hear me, I'm sure you're probably uh, muted. Unmute for me, please. Okay, can you, if you can hear me, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, it's good. And when you come towards the camera this way, we see your face properly, so that's perfect. Do stay like that for us for the brief moment we'll be talking to you. Um, okay. f first of all, International uh, Drugs Day, what does it even mean? Oh, basically, it's an International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Drug Trafficking. It's basically, it is a day that has been set aside by the United Nations for all member states to, uh, to celebrate, let me put it that way, the occasion in order for us to know the, the essence or the dangers of drug abuse and illicit trafficking that we find in our communities. So it's a special day set aside to create more awareness for member states to know. So basically, that is the essence of it. And it is celebrated in every 26th of June. Okay. And this year, 26th of June, as we know, will fall on Friday. So that is what we are going to do as and, a member state of the UN. Uh, mm, I mean, dr substance drug abuse is a big deal. It has been since I was a child. I'm sure before I was born, it was. What is the, your, your organization doing differently? in these times and especially and i was going to play a story for you where people who live in somewhere in choco were under the uh, uh assumption that smoking weed could keep you immune from uh, coronavirus uh, uh, for example i want you to take a look or let, uh, let's have our viewers take a look at that story and then when we come i want you to tell us what your organization is doing to reduce at least if not eradicate the usage of these drugs. Take a look. So, Mr. Kumsin, even before we talk about what we are doing this year to curb the use of the uh, abuse of drugs, do you feel that organizations like yours have failed people like these gentlemen in Choco? Uh, and I hope you saw the story. Oh, well, not at all. I mean, we haven't failed. Not at all. We are rather doing very good. Um, looking at what they are saying, you could see that. Um, there's no any front, uh, uh, scientific basis for what they are claiming it to be. And we, we know that uh, people who find themselves in such situation also have their own psychological and then uh, what do you call it, uh, problems that associate with uh, drug abuse. And so I can say with the convention that we haven't failed at all. We are still ongoing. And these are some of the examples that we've been ginger has more to do more to reach out to the wider uh, what do you call it, populist. So we haven't failed at all. So this year, what is the focus for your organization as you, we all commemorate World Drug, uh, Drug, Drug Day? 
Yes, as you, you may be aware, because of the situation we find ourselves in the COVID-19, where moving into communities or schools or any identifiable groups have become a big challenge. And so what we are doing this year, as the, the theme of this year says that um, the better knowledge for better care, better knowledge for better care, what is important of this year is that a lot of people have misconception about drug uh, related issues when mm. it comes to drug abuse and trafficking and all that people don't have clear understanding of it so the focus of this year is that we need to know more we need to educate people to appreciate the complexity that comes with drug abuse and illicit drug trafficking so that people will know and understand and then the the the, the video you just show also tells you that these are people who are actually sick, who are sick because the situation they find themselves is not a good situation for them, which actually we need also to understand that when you see people in that situation, it means that they are sick. But in our part of the world, we see this as a moral issue. And so we tend to, first thing that comes in our mind is that these are bad people. So these are some areas that we need to educate the public to appreciate the fact that when you see such group of people, they are rather sick, which actually they need help. So that the focus has been, and then we are, because of the COVID situation now, we are dwelling more into social media to let people know we are campaigning more now, as you have been talking to me now. We are, it is happening in the, when you go to our Facebook, our, what do you call it, Twitter and all that, you see what is going on now. It's a way also to reach out to the, Wider populace. That's what we are doing, and then moving from uh, what do you call it, uh, from media houses to that media houses. Let me say that we are most grateful to join news of giving us even this platform. We know a lot of people are watching. It's a way of also educate the public to know the issue when you talk about drug abuse or illicit drug trafficking, which of course concern all of us. Interesting. So, what's the program for this year? Yes, this, this year, as I just mentioned, um, we started with the media engagement. Okay. And uh, we've been in other media houses, which we are still going on from, we started it, uh, what do you call it, uh, extensively. And then we are moving on from now to the mm. date, which is the 20, which is 26th. 26th, that is the D-Day, where we'll do some drug distraction at the, uh, what do you call it, a, a location where we have some media uh, media outfits coming over to cover it and then also to know that. And then we'll have a, a remarks from our director general, a remarks for people to know. So we are doing a lot in the social media because of the situation that we find ourselves now. Let's do a little bit of education here. Um, for people who still believe that doing drugs, in fact, there are coalitions who are pushing for legalization, and indeed in this country there is some level of legalization, and of course, correct me if I'm wrong, level of legalization that was passed recently in, in Parliament. So for people who believe that the use of, you know, drugs, especially marijuana, is not harmful, as uh, we're told, what message do you have for them on this day? Yes, uh Point of correction, Please. there is no legalization okay. of my, my, uh, what do you call it, uh, cannabis usage, or even trade in, mm -hmm. or cultivate it. We, the nation has not legalized. That is a misconception that people have, and people have the opportunity to be in the media. The, that the people that people see as a, what do, celebrities and all that, they go into the media and then propagate this misinformation okay so help us what is the real situation yeah the real situation now is that um it is offense for anyone to cultivate to cultivate weed it is okay. an offense and then uh, you can be penalized for two thousand uh, penalties or not more than ten thousand if you are fine in such situation and the same thing comes with the usage but the only difference now is that which actually it was with the, the previous PNDC law 236, which was there. But the only difference now is that there's an element of uh, provision which says that if somebody wants to do that, to cultivate, uh, what do you call it, cannabis, 
the person needs to get a license from the uh, Minister of Interior to the commission, that is Narcotics Control Commission. It's not a uh, blanket, uh, what it open doors for anybody. What he says also is that we need to, it should be the THC, the data natural, the cannabinoid, which is the THC, which is the active ingredient in the, uh, the marijuana, should be 0.3%. You need to have that, and then they, they, you need to go through a process before to be given that permission, and it should be based on medicinal and uh, what industrial purposes, not for recreational purposes. And so the situation I think now is that that is what it is now, but the nation as a whole has not legalized the usage and the trafficking in marijuana. That's very perfectly understood. But then, then again, don't you think that with this slightly open door, that people can easily take advantage of it? Yeah, I just mentioned it. There's penalties that goes with it. Okay. And so if you want to, and the law grabs you, then you face the, you face the law. It's totally against the law to go in, in that direction. If you want, then you have to do the right thing. And I, I want to also sign... Uh, what do you call it? A, a, a note of caution to uh, those who have opportunity to have the media, which is a very, very powerful tool to propagate falsehood or misinformation to the general public, especially those who have followers, that they come into the radio and TV or whatever means to say all kinds of things to people. It is against the law to do that. In this country, a lot of people like to see it happen, then they can believe. So, We'll be here to see if there will be any examples that people can learn from. But I'd like to just draw your attention to a global, uh, a global in initiative against transnational organized crime report. And I'll quote to you what that report uh, says. It's essentially saying that there is widespread collusion among politicians and is said to have been facilitated or facilitating the illicit drug trade in Ghana because with profit from the drug trafficking, uh, it reportedly infiltrates the financing of the country's political system. This is a report that's coming from the Global Initiative Against Illicit Drugs. What is uh, the, your commission's response to that? Yes, I, I'm, I, you just mentioned the source, but I don't know the, the level of uh, research that was done. I don't know. I wouldn't be in the position unless, of course, we have the, the what do you call it, we have the reports, look at the methodology that they use, and the uh, the conclusion that they came with, and that will inform us or give us a better understanding of whatever it is, so that we'll be able to talk about it or whatever it is. It. But when you talk about drug trafficking or drug abuse, it is something that we know it affects uh, good governance, it affects security, and it affects human, uh, what do you call it, uh, resource capability. Mm. So it's cut across, it's a very broad spectrum that when you talk about drug related issues it cut across all these uh, spheres of life so unless we have the, this then we'll be, we'll be in a better position also to comment on that but from your experience as someone who has worked with the uh, uh with the control uh, narcotics control commission for for years i believe you're, you're head of education what has been the story with illicit drug and politics? And I'm saying that because especially we're in an election year, we're just coming from a primary that a lot of people have described as monetized. In fact, my colleague just told us that some of them that he spoke to have actually admitted to giving delegates money, even though they lost. So they link this report to the high cost of doing politics. So what has been your experience over the years? Yes, I, 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 would, I would not be, I can't, sit right in front of you here to tell you that, uh, what do you call it, uh, politicians, whoever, whoever they are, are engaging in drugs to finance their, their, what do you call it, their activities. We, as commission, our work is to be, do our work and make sure that anybody who is defined culpable, the law deals with the person. We don't talk about mingling with the political activities. We do our job. If the law caught up with you, will deal with you. It doesn't matter wherever you belong to. So that will be, that has been our stand as commission.
you have any final words to, to mark the day, if you like, International Day Against uh, Trafficking of Drugs? Your final words. Yes, uh, what we, we want the public to know is that when we talk about uh, drug abuse and this, that, that trafficking, it is something that affects all of us, more especially with our youth. We encourage the, the, what do you call it, the parents to have a little time for their children, especially most of them, those are at home, and all that we tend not to know even what they do. We encourage parents to take a very good notice and then take good care of their children. And again, if they see any sign that their, their children is in particular direction, there's help. Those who also find themselves in the issue of drug, uh, substance use disorder, there's hope for such people. And then the hope is available for them also to seek at professional advice, counseling, so that they will also be helped. And we should also have at the back of our mind that people who have substance use disorder are actually sick and they need our help and our support as a nation. We also want to, the public to know that if you find yourself, if the law catch up with you, on the other side, the law will surely deal with you. Okay. Mr. Sylvester Kumsen, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. He's head of education unit, Narcotic Control Commission there.